Welcome to Piney Forest Baptist Church. Today we're going to be studying the book of Jude, and we'll be opening up to the book of Jude, verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the, com of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness or unbridled passion. It says here that uh, it's and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. We have already prayed and we're going to go into the book of Jude. Something out of the ordinary is happening in our world. It's taking place. We are living in an age of apostasy. Uh, the apostate. So the church age began in Acts chapter 2. and We know that as the book of apostasy. Of the uh, apostles. Well, Jude, right before the book of Revelation, is the porch or the walkway or the threshold going into the book of Revelation, and God placed it there for a very important reason, and we call that the act of the apostates. We have some things that Jude help us to understand how to live in this world in these last days before Christ comes again. There's some words here. We're going to cover this. A lot of people said that I never studied the book of Jude. It's a time it's just like turning on the six o'clock news or reading the newspaper. You're going to realize what uh, age we're in. This book was written for the church in the last days. And they have some words here that uh, want to you mentally underline, or you can underline if you so wish. In uh, verse 1, it says here, sanctified by God the Father and preserved. In verse 2, we'll look at the words mercy, peace, and love. Verse 3 is a theme of the whole book, that we should earnestly contend for the faith. We go on to a verse of five through seven and we, it to be here it says that uh set forth for an example and we see these in verse eight and nine and ten that uh we says here about these filthy dreamers and they are beast in chapter 10. we talks about uh, in chapter 12 through 13, we'll talk about the darkness, the blackness of darkness forever. In verse 13 and 14, we'll talk about the Lord is coming. And then the end of the book, it talks about how we can live right in a world that is living wrong and having compassion, making a difference in this world. As we read verses 1 through 4, we see that Jude, the half-brother of Jesus Christ, we know that uh, Mary and Joseph, after the birth of Jesus Christ, they did have many uh, other children, and the children, the sons and daughters, do not believe that Jesus was Christ until after the uh, resurrection. Jude, he humbly calls himself a servant, or in this uh, word here, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James. Uh, instead of flaunting who he was and honoring himself relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and growing up in that household, uh, 
We know this is the half-brother of Jesus Christ. We know they had the same mother, Mother Mary, uh, and the father uh, of our Savior was the Holy Spirit, conceived him. So they had different fathers. Jude had the earthly father, Joseph. But they grew up in the same household. And we see here a servant of the Son of God called. This is a primary description of Jews reader today that we should be it says here that uh, to them that are sanctified, that means those who are set apart in these days. It means that those are set apart to live right in these days and what God had called us for. It continues in verse 5 and continues to explain to us how wicked these people are. And God is going to judge them and deal with them according to their sins. Uh, then in chapter ends with a glorious admiration of ways we as Christians can do and make a difference in this lost world. There is no other book that summarizes the age we are living in than Jude does. It will be like uh, open, uh, reading the newspaper or watching the news. God places it right before the book of Revelation because uh, it's the hallway that leads into that book. We have seven goals uh, during our study, during the uh, book of Jude. We pray that we will understand that the meaning of the word apostate and recognize their characteristics. We will pray, number two, that we will develop a spirit of discernment in these days. No other generation has so uh, much religious deception and lies been told to us. And so many uh, things, false teachers are creeping in, even in our beautiful communities and our churches. Number three, we would need to pray that we, that we would have Bible-based convictions, but also Christ-like compassions. It's, uh, the Lord wants us, our compassions to run as deep as our convictions will run high. We must con earnestly contend for the faith. Every generation needs to do this. We must stand up for God and we must live a holy life in uh, this changing world. Thank God in this changing world, when everything is changing, one thing does not change. God himself, his word and his love for us and the way of salvation. We need to live a holy life and we need to seek God and his mercy during these perilous days. We need to pray that we can make a difference in this wicked world by winning people to Christ. It's just a, uh, this book is just uh, not even divided into chapters. It, uh, one chapter, 25 verses, 609 words. But uh, we are, and it says here that we are given a duty to earnestly contend for the faith and also that we have a danger that apostates, certain people, and false teachers are creeping in unaware, unnoticed, and bring into their errors and false teachings with them. Apostate, that means to stand from the truth. These are lost people who have seen the truth, who have chosen to turn away from it, turn their back on it. Now, we, you cannot go to heaven walking hand in hand with the devil. And a Christian cannot be apostate for the Lord Jesus Christ is living in us and we cannot separate ourselves from them and he will never leave or forsake us. Because this is a powerful book. This is one that every Christian needs to read. And verses one, we'll talk about being sanctified by God the Father and preserved. This was written around 66 AD. Uh, uh, the place was unknown. The author, we said, was Jude, the brother of James, the half-brother of Jesus Christ. And we know that uh, Mary, Martha, Martha, Mary, and Joseph had many children, but uh, after Jesus was born, she was a virgin, but after that, they had normal mar uh, relationships, a marital relationship. This is the last book before the book of Revelation. God so placed it there. The human author, we all are uh, said that we are, uh, he said he was uh, sanctified. He said he was uh, preserved. That's all we are. We just sinners saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are bondservants of Jesus Christ. 
if we are born again. If you grew up in the household of Jesus' family, you know, uh, living with him, I wonder what all he saw. They said we were sanctified, addressed to the saved people. Uh, First uh, Peter uh, 1, 13 through 19 says we are set apart. We should live a different life. We are preserved. We are, uh, he's keeping our, his eye on us. And we are called, we are invited, we are appointed to serve him in 2 Peter 1.10. The Acts of the Apostles began the church age in the book of Acts chapter 2. But now in Jude we see the Acts of the Apostates. The end of the church age has come. To contend only here, it means the idea to maintain the original faith of the gospel that was, that is, being destroyed by false teachers. Today, the word of God has been watered down. Uh, we see people today, uh, uh, all that they try to bring in, false teachings, they twisted the word. We need to preach the word of God like never before. We remember the parable about the birds came eating the seed as the sowers put them down. Now, whatever the truth is proclaimed, whenever we do preach the truth, you know, evil follows closely behind and try to pluck us out of our heart and snatch it away. It says here in verse 2, Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. You know, uh, uh, Jude is very interesting because of the content, because of the location of the book. It is all, it is uh, all, that we have at the end of the church age. This is where we're living. The church age, like I said, beginning in Acts, is now coming to the end. And now, right before Jude, uh, is the end of the church age in, in uh, Revelation chapter 2 and 3. Mercy is an upward look. We look for God for mercy. And peace is an inward look. And love is an outward look. Just as the church age has now it has beginning in the book of Acts, we see now the church age begin to have its ending in the book of Jude. It's just another page in the cal uh, cal calendar of God. It's just another page in time. And we are slowly coming to the end days, uh, you know, until that final day. It's, it's a description of the church in the final days. It's a dangerous time we live in. We must, must read and we must uh, have mercy. We need the aim for this lesson in our church in, through Jude is to recognize our need for God's mercy and the importance of it. To realize God does give mercy even in these per perilous times. We do not deserve mercy, but we need mercy in these days that, uh, from God. Pray for mercy on a daily basis for our church and for our church family, for our nation. God divines order. Always mercy first and then peace, like he said in Romans chapter 5 and Philippians and then love. It's always a special order, a divine order. And that's the way it comes. Uh, but without God's mercy, you would never have any peace of God or peace with God. And then we'd never know that true love. His mercy endures forever. He is uh, holding back what we deserve. Mercy is holding back that judgment that we do deserve. And grace is giving up to us what we do not deserve. Jude number 3, verse 3. Earnestly contend for the faith. Our aims in chapter uh, verse 3 is... As a Christian, it is our responsibility to earnestly contend for the faith. This is not an option. You cannot uh, choose if you're going to uh, earnestly contend, stand up for the faith these days or not. Uh, contend uh, is being is not being contentious. We don't have to be hateful. We don't have to be mean. We, uh, but to contend involves both being on the defense and offense. And we should contend for the faith, the entire Word of God. All our convictions should come from the Word of God. It shouldn't be from feelings or something that uh, a lot of other 
religion that was formed in the last 200 years, and we'll talk about them. A lot of religions are just coming into our society and our churches and false teachings. All our convictions should come from the Word of God, and we want to be Christ-like like in our compassion. Realize that we can never stop contending and never be lack, uh, never compromise in his word. The devil will walk by your house a thousand times to just to see the front door cracked open or a window open that he can get into your life. We're gonna have to be on guard, especially these last days. Never lay, never lay down your armor as a child of God. And the key that unlocks this book of Jude, and this is a theme that we're gonna go by the whole time, earnestly contend for the faith. Jude, like we said, to review uh, the half-brother of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, called himself a bondservant, uh, meaning here that he willfully uh, he, uh, obeyed Jesus Christ. The beginning of the church, uh, age of the church describes of the act of the apostles the end of the church age and at this form will be called the end the act of the apostates jude is the only book in god's word entirely devoted with the great apostasy which has come upon uh, christianity today this brief message of only 25 verses 600 and some words uh, is the hallway to revelation without Jude, the picture of uh, prophecy and the teaching of Christ uh, would be incomplete. But we see here the problem today. Jude, it says, Jude does not pull a rank. He does, he just reminded us that he is the actual half brother of Jesus. To them that are sanctified, those that are set apart, born again by the blood of Jesus Christ and preserved to Jesus Christ and called. You know, pre pre uh, preserved in Jesus Christ should be translated, kept for Jesus Christ. It is used in Peter's and Paul and Prisman's letters. And also, Jude warns of the terrible apostasy that has already came into our world and gonna grow. If it, if it was there during the time of Jude, 2,000 years ago, can you not see how it already blossomed and how it developed? A couple of words here, sanctified, set apart for God's use. We do not belong to ourselves. We are not our own, not our own property. We've been, uh, we've been uh, nor do we belong to the devil. And we are preserved, we are kept for, the, uh, for his return. Mercy, we have fresh mercy every day to do what we need to do to serve him, not to sin anymore, but to serve. And beloved, in verse three it says, beloved, it means that God loves him. In the midst of all this, God, uh, it's good to know that God loves him. No, Jude wrote this letter about, on the common salvation, but he uh, it's common to all. We all are born Again, the same way, by the blood of Jesus Christ. The word of the Bible is just one Bible, one faith, one religion, one God, uh, and one way of salvation. And it's th through the blood of Jesus Christ. He was right uh, on that. It is uh, to be a Christian in these last days. And that include to us, we must earnestly contend for the faith. We must stand up for what we know. We cannot let this gospel, this message that delivered once and for all to all the saints be watered down and not passed along. You cannot just take it or leave it. You're gonna to have to live today. Uh, why is this so important? Heaven and hell uh, is a uh, serious matter. Yeah, it can, there is a connection between the common salvation and contending for the faith. There is a phrase it, at verse 3 that was used in Acts 17. It was needful that Christ must suffer and die on the old rugged cross and raise again on that third day. And it said here that it was needful, a must, it was needful that we could contend for the faith in these last days. Our generation needs this uh, This. Uh, we meet this evil and false teaching 
on every hand. It is needful for Christ to, to have died and paid for our sin debt. Uh, not, they are not a work salvation. You can never be good enough to outweigh the bad. If we could have done that, Christ would not have to die on the cross. And we, he said he writes with diligence. He, it was needful. We must earnestly contend. He takes this, uh, this book very seriously. The points that we want to learn during this is that it is needful for every generation, not just for teachers and preachers, but uh, needful for every Christian to contend for the faith. Faith and truth once delivered uh, for all. It says here a lot of uh, different versions of the Bible. It says the faith which was once uh, was once for all delivered to the saints. I mean, we have the entire revelation of God. We don't need anything else. We don't need, if it's new, it's not true. If it's true, it's not new. We have the word of God, complete word of God. And we, uh, faith and truth, once delivered, and once and for all times, been delivered to every generation and to the saints. What does contend me to stand seriously, be sober, Ephesians 6 said we need to do all that we can to stand, you know, to stand up, to speak out, having done all we can to stand. Stand up for what we believe in, for what is right. Uh, have you ever seen or heard uh, so many sinners and ungodly people today standing up or bowing down to uh, what they uh, have to say? I mean, unity in the vision and uh, all these things and uh, they are writing books, they do the radio shows, they own the newspaper, they protest and they holding up banners and getting their agenda across. Where are the Christians today? Where are the Christians today? We're going to talk uh, in a couple weeks about Cain. I had two or three people ask me well, why was uh, it was so bad about Cain. I mean, he was a farmer and he uh, thought it was probably not good to slain a uh, little lamb for a sacrifice, yet he didn't care about slaying his brother. He knew Adam and Eve when they was in the garden and God saw their shame and they tried to do a work salvation by tying on that little fig leaf. God said that is not uh, worthy. said only by the, blood, blood, uh, the shedding of blood is their remission of sin. Uh, Adam and Eve in the Bible was said they was taught the gospel. And I am sure they passed it down that uh, God wanted a blood sacrifice. And Cain, I know he probably gave the biggest melons, the biggest turnips, the biggest taters, the biggest football. But it was a, a work salvation by pride. God wanted a blood sacrifice. It's not what we do. And we'll talk about that. And why one thing Jude has not been taught about, has not been brought up in their churches it stops on a lot of toes. But if I hit your toes, that's not where I'm headed. That's not what I'm aiming for. For I'm aiming for your heart and for a change in your mind to stand up and earnestly contend for the faith. Uh, but we also, God said, when we do this, when we teach and we preach in these days, that we do have a duty and we do have a danger. But you know, we should also have compassion we can preach on this if we have a tear in our eyes. I love America. I love my church. I love my God. And I'm going to stand up for what's right. We can't let things come in, creep in, you know, because these people that we do love, love is telling the people on the second floor that the bottom floor is on fire. We need to sound out the warning. There was a man up there in the mountains. He, he, uh, behind the church house. I guess there was a graveyard back there. As a lot of people do, they go up there to the graveyard and look at the grave. But it was a very steep bank. And he fell down the bank and they found him Sunday morning there. He was already passed on. And in his hand, he grabbed a straw. That, I guess he just reached out to grab onto something, but it's not what would uh, save him. That's what the world is doing today. They reaching out and all they're gonna have is a straw. 
when they need a savior. They need to know the truth. And we need to earnestly contend for that. We need to preach the word and teach the word like we never had before. A lot of false teachers keep coming into our churches and they are creeping in unaware. Even in our great, a beautiful community, we have false, false uh, teachings and churches that are, are teaching things that are not quite right. Uh, salvation and a relationship with God by feelings and not by faith. A lot of time, we're going to walk this old world without feelings, but we're going to have to walk by faith. It's not a work salvation. Jesus, it's not what we do or what we've done. It's what Jesus Christ done for us on the works of the cross. I hope you enjoy this uh, lesson coming up. We'll be in it a couple of weeks. We'll go through the book of Jude. And the theme is that we must earnestly contend for the faith. Thank you. God bless.